The New York Times posted today that North Korea's latest missile test suggests that there is an arms race with South Korea. North Korea said it tested a missile with a super large warhead on Monday, yesterday, July 1st. South Korea has similar missiles meant to target underground bunkers. So are these super large warheads that North Korea tested? Are they meant to be bunk bunker busters, as they call them? Two of the new missiles, known as the Hwasong um, 11DA uh, 4.5, were launched on Monday, each with a dummy warhead that weighed 4.5 tons. Now, ballistic missiles often carry warheads that weigh less than a ton, but this one was 4.5 tons. Colonel Lee Sung Jun. A spokesman for the South military said the North Wasong 11 series missiles were believed to be capable of carrying a payload of half a ton to maybe 2.5 tons, but that it was theoretically possible to modify them to deliver a 4.5 ton payload. Colonel Lee accused North Korea of deceptively exaggerating its capabilities in the Tuesday report. One of the two missiles the North launched on Monday crashed in an empty field after an abnormal flight, he said. As you know, North Korea recently signed a, um agreement with Russia, them becoming closer and closer and closer than even they were with China. The United States has accused North Korea of supplying Wasong-11 missiles to Russia for use against Ukraine. Both Pyongyang and Moscow have denied trading in arms, which would violate United Nations Security Council resolutions imposed on North Korea because of its nuclear weapons program. Well, yeah, they don't care. The launch Monday was the second major weapons test reported by the North since its leader, Kim Jong-un, hosted President Vladimir Putin of Russia for talks in Pyongyang on June 19th. Last week, North Korea claimed for the first time that it had tested technology for launching several nuclear warheads with a single missile. The South cast doubt on that report, too. South Korea, citing the North's growing nuclear threat, has ramped up its own military spending in recent years. That includes its development of ballistic missiles with large warheads meant to target underground bunkers where North Korea keeps its nuclear arsenal and where its political and military leaders could hide in the event of war. Now, supposedly, a need for munitions to use against Ukraine is pushing Russia's leader to deepen its ties with North Korea, raising alarms in the West. The text of the agreement was not immediately released. When President Vladimir Putin arrived there in North Korea, they literally rolled out the red carpet for him. During Putin's visit to North Korea, uh, they revised the Cold War era mutual defense pledge between their nations and vowed solidarity in challenging the United States. The two leaders did sign an agreement, a document uh, said that the pact called for the nations to aid one another in the event of aggression against either country. Kim Jong-un claimed that the new treaty elevated the two countries' relation to an alliance. The Pledge of Mutual Assistance is likely to further alarm Washington and its allies. It could presage not only deeper support by North Korea for Russia's war in Ukraine, but also greater support from Moscow in aiding Kim's quest for better functioning nuclear weapons, missiles, submarines, and satellites. Well, they just, I, I reported this um, last night on my Patreon account, 
how um, North Korea is now using Russian satellites for its TV broadcasts and no longer using China's satellites. Any transfer of arms or military technology to or from North Korea is prohibited by the United Sanctions that Russia blessed. Mr. Putin, however, said on Wednesday when they signed the agreement that it was time to review those sanctions, calling the very practice of sanctions strangulation and a tool of Western hegemony. Pyongyang has the right to take reasonable measures to strengthen its own defense capabilities, ensure national security, and protect sovereignty, Putin um, later added. In 2020, South, the South, South Korea, said it had developed a ballistic missile with one of the largest warheads in the world. In 2021, Mr. Kim vowed to develop a super large nuclear warhead. And later that year, North Korea said it had launched a new ballistic missile that could carry a two and a half ton warhead. Putin's visit to Pyongyang last month triggered fears in the region that Russia would help North Korea to, to develop its missiles in return for large shipments of artillery shells, ballistic missiles, and other conventional munitions for Russia's war of attrition in Ukraine. North Korea said its missile test this week was a success of great significance. The results were reported to the meeting of the ruling Workers' Party Central Committee that ended on Monday, the state media reported and said it was on 11 DA 4.5 would be tested again later this month. North Korea by far is the longest lived socialist state, surpassing the Soviet Union in longevity. It survived the Korean War of 1950 and 1953. The arduous march of the late 1990s went up to 600,000 people died of starvation and disease and eight years of near embargoes caused by the UN Security Council sanctions. The secret of the regime's survivability is debated, but it is clear that the administrative system has played a role, and an important element of this system is the Workers' Party of Korea. Kim Jong-un has used the Workers' Party meetings to issue political go goals and to tighten his grip on power. And for the first time, state media photos from the latest meeting were shown, have shown delegates wearing pins bearing Mr. Kim's image, like the ones they have worn for years to honor Mr. Kim, Kim's predecessor as supreme leader, his father and his grandfather. So I don't know if they have bunker bunkers that they plan on using or they think they're going to use on South Korea. North Korea is definitely in an arms race. And they do have nuclear weapons. How many? I don't know. According to the Arms Control and Proliferation Profile, North Korea currently is estimated to have 50 warheads as of January of this year, 2024. And the fissile material for an estimated 70 to 90 nuclear weapons. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please share. Please thumbs up my videos. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.